Madam Secretary, please conduct a roll call. Akil, Banks, Present. Collins, Cook, Present. Guy, Ingandela, Present. March, Tamayo, Present. Valdez. Present. Oh, present. Please let the record reflect that all members of the board, with the exception of, of Dr. Collins and our board chair, Akeem, are not present. At this time, our vice chair designee, Mr. Um, Ingandilo, will read the meeting guidelines. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Please silence all electronic devices. Cases that are brought before the CRB are closed internal affairs cases that have been investigated and brought to the police chief for disposition. It's the Citizens Review Board's job to review the cases and render an opinion as to whether the investigation was done according to the department policies and procedures. The Citizens Review Board members are provided the investigative files in advance of the meeting. Members of the public will have an opportunity to address the Citizens Review Board during the public comment portion of the meeting. At that time, speakers will be given three minutes to speak on matters related to the Tampa Police Department. If you wish to speak, we ask that you provide your name, address, as well as a brief description on the topic. Members of the board will not be able to comment during public comment phase of the meeting. Complaints made during public comment will be followed up by the coordinator of the Tampa Police Department and responded to accordingly. Thank you, Mr. Ngandela. We will move forward with item four, approval of the minutes. The minutes have been provided to all members in advance and we need to approve the minutes from the February 27, 2024 meeting. So moved. Second. A motion has been made by Ms. Skye to approve the minutes from February 27, 2024. Second by Mr. Ingandela. Um, all those in favor, please show by raise of hand. Any opposes, please show by raise of hand. Motion passes. We now move to the public comments section of the meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, this board wants to hear from the public through public comment, which is provided in a professional and orderly manner. In order to ensure this meeting is conducted in accordance with the policies and procedures, I am announcing that as chair, uh, vice chair, I will strictly enforce the following rules for the benefit of ensuring an orderly and professional meeting. I am requesting the board not address public comment until the end of the public comment. Speakers will be limited to three minutes at the kiosk. Speakers may only speak once. Speakers may not yield their time. Comments should be limited to matters related to the Tampa Police Department. Comments should not be made regarding ongoing professional standard cases. Comments shall be directed to the board as a whole and not to an individual member. At this time, we will go to the speakers who wish to come to the podium for public comment. Speakers must remember to state your name and address as the clerk is keeping minutes and needs to know who is talking. The clerk will start the timer for the speakers. Good evening. Uh, James Schaff, West Tampa. I'm a local attorney, and I spent a lot of time thinking about you. Um, I just came here just to talk to you for a moment about uh, House Bill 601, because I think there's a lot of confusion as to what that does and what doesn't. Uh, the media has incorrectly reported that it would require you to be dissolved. Nothing in House Bill 601 actually says that. If I'm able to go to the Elmo, I can show you the, the operative language. I'm not sure how to switch to the Elmo, but oh, there you go, you can see it. So what it prohibits is the receipt and processing, investigation and oversight. I'm gonna cover those one at a time. Receipt and processing was already covered under Florida Statute 112.533. The statute existed when the CRB ordinance was drafted. So it was drafted to comply with this ordinance. So nothing needs to change there. All this ordinance says is that when, when a complaint is received, it has to be turned over to the Professional Standards Bureau within five days. That's what already happens. And then the documents are um, not subject to public records laws until the investigation is over, which is also what already happens. So there's no change there. Uh, the next thing is investigation. You do not investigate. If you look at the ordinance, uh, it says what you do, it says you review closed investigations. When the investigation is closed, you're not investigating anymore. You might finally remember this guy setting me straight on that issue. So you, you do not investigate. What you do is you audit a closed investigation. But the investigation is over 
before you ever see it. You do not participate in that investigation. The last thing it says you can't do is oversight, but it doesn't define what oversight means. Uh, there is a court case that actually uh, discusses oversight. It's a uh, district uh, of Nevada court, but the word oversight means the same thing in Nevada and all the other 49 states as it means in Florida. And, and that word is defined as meaning watchful or responsible care or regulatory supervision. You do not oversee the Tampa Police Department and you don't have any regulatory supervision over them. All you can do is review a closed investigation and at the end of it say, great job, fellas, or you didn't do a very good job and I hope you do better next time. That's the extent of this board's power. So uh, the only other thing that is in the bill is that it says um, that a sheriff can establish um, a, his own kind of hand-picked board and at, at the end of the bill it says a police chief can do the same thing, but it doesn't say that if they do that, then you can't also exist. That, that's just not in the bill. So what the legislature thought they were doing or what the uh, Police Benevolent Association were asking for when they lobbied for this bill, I can't speak to that. What I can speak to is what the bill actually says, and it doesn't say that you have to stop doing anything that you are currently doing. It certainly doesn't say that you have to stop um, participating in the hiring process or conducting an annual survey or reviewing matters of interest or making recommendations to the mayor or chief of police. Everything that you do now, House Bill 601 doesn't say you have to stop doing, and I wanted to tell you that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scott. I will now ask whether there were any recorded comments received through the voicemail set up for this meeting. Yep. Were there any written comments received? There were no written comments received. Thank you. That concludes the public comment portion of our meeting. Please let the record show that Dr. Collins is present um, for our meeting as well. I have a question for Mr. Joe, if you could approach. Mr. Shaw. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am, I'd be happy to. Uh, what was the catalyst that brought you here this evening? Oh, the, there has been a lot of misinformation in the, the news media, and I've heard it thrown around several times that House Bill 601 is um, um, going to require citizen review boards to be dissolved or that it's going to require them to have a member who's a retired police officer, or that it's gonna mean that they have to stop uh, reviewing closed complaints, and that's not true. There's a lot of confusion, and I'm a good citizen of Tampa, and I thought I would come tell my board what, uh, what I think it was and use my legal education to benefit the public, that's why. Thank you. You're welcome. Dr. Collins. Do you want to come up? Yeah, we're going to come back. Or you come back, please. Mr. Shaw? Yes, sir. Can you please approach the podium? Sure. And while you're coming, I'll go ahead and ask the question. Sure. It was indicated that we have 21 bills in Florida. I'm sorry? It, is it, and since you're kind of up on that, and especially for us, there are 21 bills uh, or ordinance or it, uh, citizen review in of the 67 counties. Yeah, it depends it, it depends how you define it because And that's the, just what I was going to ask you to do. Sure. We have citizen review boards, some of them are citizen advisory boards. Uh, do you know how many that we have in the state that is kind of a review board, advisory board, or is there any difference between those that are out there that you know? So some I exist have question. Sure. <laughs> some exist pursuant to an ordinance, some pursuant to a charter provision. Uh, interestingly enough, this, the statute only speaks to ordinances, so I think like Key West, for instance, it's in their city charter. I don't think this would affect them at all. Um, in some municipalities, the head of the law enforcement agency created the panel, so it's the sheriff or the chief of police appointed individuals to be an advisor to that person, but it's all kind of internal. Uh, I don't count those as citizens review boards. Um, I'm counting the ones that, that uh, exist pursuant to an ordinance or a, a resolution or a policy or something that comes from outside of the department. And I, 
this is the 21 number is not mine, and I'm not sure if it's accurate or not. I think that was the number that the Leroy Collins Institute came up with, applying the definition that they applied, and I think it's very similar to the one that I just did, but I can't swear to that. Okay. Well, that, that, that was real, <clears throat> excuse me, that was kind of important to me. I was just curious as to, I've understood that there's a significant difference between the different boards, and uh, I heard what you said, so I won't ask you again. I was trying to figure out why did this bill go up, uh, and I want to ask you one final question. In the final bill, if the governor should, if he has signed it yet, I'm assuming he has not yet. He has not. I just but checked. If and he, he should hadn't. signed it, uh, is there a salary difference in there, and will it go across the state uh, to all the entities and law enforcement that? He has given it to, uh, did you see the salary piece? Yeah, the, there is, that language is right here, and to be honest with you, I haven't given it much thought because I was focused on the language that affected you, but there is a salary language in there, but I don't want to speak about it and be wrong because I haven't studied it enough to okay. answer your question. I was just curious because I'm still trying to figure out why the deal was fitting. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Mr. Shaw, if you could just stay there. Sure. Thank you. Uh, so if the chief were to establish a civilian board, it would be wholly separate from this? Indeed, yeah. The, the, the chief can do what, it's, it's within the authority of a law enforcement uh, chief to do that. Right. Um, but yeah. it has nothing, it doesn't mean that you, it has nothing to do with you. It would be in addition to this. He could do it in addition to that, yeah. And you're talking about the chief of police, correct? Yes, the chief. Yes, of the chief of police or a sheriff could could establish yeah. the their sheriff own. sheriff have something, but it may not be this. They have something totally different. I don't know what it's called, and if they still have it. I did go to theirs and went through their kind of like training. So. Right. I believe Chief Chief Dugan at one point had done that. Had had, he a, had a, he an had informal a, group yes. that advised him, but that they okay. they can do that, and that doesn't affect so, you at so all. So this would be a form of that. I'm sorry? This would be a form of that. The chief right, this kind of formalizes what was done informally before, I suppose, is, is what that language does. But it doesn't supplant existing groups. It doesn't say that they have to be dissolved. Yep. Mr. Cook? Yeah, thank you. Um, I appreciate you clarifying this because I've heard all the rumors. But um, has the chief always had this, the power to establish his own you know, civilian board? Has he always had that power, or is it being established in this? Well, um, <laughs> evidently so, because a, a number of sheriffs and, and chief, chiefs of police have done that, right. have appointed their own um, kind of informal advisory board that, that advises them, and that's within, I suppose, the powers of, of, a, of a law enforcement head. And this statute kind of says that they, if you look at the language, it just says that they may do that. And if they do do that, then they have to have at least one retired law enforcement officer on there. That's the only thing the statute really changes as to that. OK, thank you, Mr. Shaw. But I do still have a question. Sure. Um, doesn't he have that board already? Doesn't he have an advisory team um, that, that um, he, I guess he bounces ideas off of? I mean, isn't there a team already? Yeah, I think he already has a team. Excuse me, ma'am? I thought him and the mayor had one together. Yeah, they have a team already. But there I may be. I know Chief Dugan one. established one, and I don't know if that okay. one that he okay. establishes the one that's still in existence, but okay. um, but it, it exists separately from you. It's not. You know. Well, the reason why I'm saying that is we actually reviewed a case, I think it was the first or second one that I was on, that actually spoke about one of the police officers. He was taking off that board because of his mishap, whatever happened to him. Mm -hmm. So I think this board is there anyway. I think so, yeah. There's no reason you can't have two boards. That okay. one that's, that's okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. I appreciate you. Anybody else before I sit down? Miss Guy? No, go ahead. Um, I, I'm not looking to you as the expert on this. I'm just asking as a general question sure. how does this affect our statutes? And only people that can really answer that are our representatives that are sitting right there. So I think we need to make sure that we separate what you're saying to us, because I, I, I do appreciate you coming here. I mean, I did read the bill, I did understand the bill, but I still am not sure how it's gonna affect the statute that we work under. And so, you know, we, we have a little bit of an overreach in our statute, and that is part of the reason 
I'm sure these bills were brought forward, the overreach of these boards. And our statute has some of that in it. So I would ask that we look at this from the perspective of our staff and say, you know, how does this affect our statute? Sure. In fact, you probably remember me advocating that you should have your own independent attorney. And one of the reasons that I advocated for that is because I foresaw this day coming where you're going to need to ask somebody can we continue to exist? What can we do? What can we not do? And you need somebody who answers to you because I hate to say this out loud, but I think that there are people within city government who say that they love you, but if they could dissolve you with the wave of a hand, they would happily do so. And if you have somebody who's loyal to someone like that giving you advice, they'll be internally conflicted. And so when you hire your independent attorney, make sure that you ask that attorney, are you going to advocate for this board to continue to exist and do what it does? Ms. Guy? Indeed, we all have those biases, all of us. So I will just say that we all have those biases. So thank you very much. Thank Before you. you leave, just one last question. Uh, Mr. Shaw, one, one last question. Yes, <clears throat> when we look at, and, and Ms. Guy is right, when we look at the, the city of Tampa and we look at the ordinance that we are under, when you look at some that you say you don't perceive just, and this is just your information, we're just asking as a public, a person in the public. When you look at those other boards and you see what they are doing, and some of them you say don't have the same, uh, they're not doing the same thing we do, may not have the same power, are they by uh, ordinance or are they just advisory panel? And maybe just a couple. The one I keep seeing and is the one in Lakeland. Some of them are, exist by ordinance. Some of them exist by, um, by executive order from the chief of police or from the sheriff's office. Uh, most of them exist pursuant to an ordinance, like Miami, Miami-Dade County, Broward County, um, Orange County. They all exist by ordinance. Key West has a, a um, charter provision. I think it's the only one that exists pursuant to that. So there's, there's different hodgepodges. But under the Home Rule Powers Act, a municipality, you know, that which is not forbidden is allowed. If, if the legislature can do something, then a municipality can also do it unless the legislature has said no. But there's nothing in House Bill 601 that says no to anything that's in Tampa Code 18-8, which is what the, the ordinance pursuant to which this board exists. Okay. What was that code again? 18-8? Yes. Yeah, okay. that's the, that's the uh, city of Tampa ordinance pursuant oh, to which this board was formed. And that lists the powers of the board. That was the one I had on the screen a, a second ago that enumerates what you would go. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. Do we have any further um, comments or questions from any of the board members? May we please hear from the city staff as to it relates to um, their interpretations and thoughts as it relates to this House bill and, and what will be coming out? Maria pettis from the legal department. I do not have an interpretation of the bill. I just provided the board members what the bill is. It's not signed by the governor, so I don't have an interpretation for you. Um, we are speaking internally on how this bill could impact this board. Further information will be provided later, but this bill is not signed. Again, I'm trying to keep this board informed of the legislation, and we will go from there. But there's, I don't have an interpretation for you. Thank you. At this time, we will continue with the um, items we reviewed. Moving on to item number seven. Um, may we please have somebody from Professional Standards Bureau approach the podium, please. Good evening, uh, Captain Kevin Schoolmeister, commander of the Professional Standards Bureau. I'm here to review with you uh, our internal affairs investigation, 23R, which means required by policy-002 involving uh, Brian Tracy. I'll give you a brief synopsis. This is an administrative investigation into the accidental discharge of a department-issued firearm possessed by Officer Brian Tracy that occurred on February 16th of 2023. There was no injury or damage to any person or property. Found, Officer uh, Albazu Maceo was on scene and witnessed this incident. The incident was captured on Officer Tracy and Officer Maceo's body-worn camera. 
and a home uh, surveillance video system that was located across the street. The summation on uh, February 16th of 2023, Officer Brian Tracy and Officer Alba Zoo Maceo were operating as a two-man uh, plainclothes unit. Both officers were wearing their black raid vest that read police on the front and back and uh, donned their department issued badge. The officers were at task with locating a subject who was wanted for a shooting that occurred earlier in the morning. Through investigative leads, they were able to develop that the subject's possible whereabouts were located at 8204 North 11th Street. The officers conducted covert surveillance on the target location from the driveway across the street at 8202 North 11th Street. The officers conducted the surveillance from their unmarked undercover police vehicle. During the surveillance, a vehicle returned to the target location and a subject matching the description of the alleged suspect exited the vehicle. The subject walked from the vehicle to the entry door of the uh, target location. As he did so, officers Tracy and Maceo exited their covert vehicle with the department issued firearms drawn, pointing at the subject, commanding him to get on the ground. As officer Tracy reached the end of the driveway located across the street at 8202 North 11th Street, he stepped off a slightly raised curb, lost his balance, and fell to the ground. As his body contacted the ground, his fire at, firearm accidentally discharged in a single round into a northern direction and then stovepipe. And just for people who are wondering what a stovepipe is, is sometimes when the firearm, a handgun especially, if you're not holding it tight with your wrist lock, so if it's limp or on a different angle and there's kind of some play in there, when you, fought, when you fire the firearm, the top of the semi-automatic firearm does not, when it goes back to eject the cartridge after the bullet's been fired, the shell casing gets stuck and it doesn't clear the gun. So if you fire properly, the shell casing would be cleared and it would reload another round into the chamber. But because when he fell, his hand wasn't held tightly or his wrist wasn't locked, that's what probably caused it. So the so it prevents another round from entering into the chamber because basically the shells just block the entrance to the uh, barrel of the firearm. Um, the area was searched by responding officers and detectives for any uh, property damage caused by the accidental discharge. There was no property damage or injury found to a person. Officer Tracy was interviewed by, on scene by uh, Internal Affair Bureau detectives Katie Thanasis and Chris Salea in the presence, presence of his PBA repre representation. Interviews were also conducted with Officer Maceo and the subject, who officers believed was the wanted subject at the time. The details of the instance were captured on Officer Tracy, Tracy and Maceo's body worn camera and the video uh, home surveillance located again across the street at 8202. Uh, and it says one, but should be two. The circumstances surrounding the incident that led to the accidental discharge were verified during the review. Crime scene technician Voigt responded, photographed the scene, both officers depicting their clothing, officers Tracy's injuries and the stovepipe to his firearm, and collected the spent 9mm casing. A round count was conducted and it was determined that Officer Tracy maintained 17 rounds in his 9mm magazine. The firearm uh, was stovepipe with the fired 9mm casing stuck in the ejection port of the firearm. This was consistent with the firearm only being fired once. The disposition of the case, the careful review of the documentation, interviews, videos, and applicable policies and procedures that apply to the facts of the case. When the captain wrote, I find the investigation disclosed sufficient evidence to sustain a violation of Tampa Police Department policy. It was determined that Officer Brian Tracy did not exercise common firearm safety rules and the handling of his firearm. Therefore, in my opinion, he is solely responsible for the accidental discharge of his department issued firearm on the performance of his duties. So he recommended that uh, the violation of MOR, or manual regulations 1503, firearms we weapons display is, was sustained and the officer was issued a letter of counseling. So. Uh, Thank so you, Captain. Any the floor questions? is open for questions or comments. Ms. Tamayo. Uh, Captain Schoolmeesters, uh, so Officer Tracy didn't exercise common firearm safety rules that it, it, it indicates that in the uh, disposition. What are the common firearm safety rules we're, in a situation where you have a, a we're all weapon drawn? We're all trained from early in the police academy not to put your finger, tr finger on the trigger. So they teach you in firearms training, you always have your index finger up off the trigger. 
Uh, so when stuff like happens, classes I've taken, when you get startled, fall or whatnot, your natural reaction is to close your fingers. <clears throat> so that's the reason why. Got so it. when he fell, I mean, that's probably, I'm guessing, his finger hit the trigger and that's when it went off. Okay, thank you. Mr. Cook. Um, my question uh, is captain, right? Correct. Captain, school meester. When the round was fired, where the heck is the bullet? Well, we looked, we searched, we couldn't find it. But in the video, when he go, when he's falling, I think he knows he's, you know, he's realizing what's happening, and he tucks the gun up underneath him. Okay. So when he hits the ground, so when he fired it, it fired up north on 11th Street. Okay. So eventually, it's got to hit something or come to the ground. Right. But the officers and detectives went out there and searched the whole area. We couldn't find it, and nobody reported any damage or any injury. Okay. Thank you. Any other further questions, Ms. Skye? Hi, Captain. Uh, was he set into any back it to training in any way? Because obviously he kept his finger on the trigger. He probably needed to be trained. Uh, well, they, I don't know in this case particular. It wasn't stated that he went back to training, but that's something we train on once a year. The basic firearms uh, is not to keep the finger. Unfortunately, you know, I can't say this is a rare exception, but it, you know, it happens once in a while. Thank you. Thanks. I have a question. Mr. Um, the term accidental, is that the normal term that you got that is used when something like this happens as opposed to like, you know, negligent or something like that? That was the, the word the captain chose to use. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? The floor is open for a motion to whether or not we concur or not concur with the findings. Ms. Guy has made a motion to concur with the sustained violation of MOR 1503, um, firearm, firearms display. Dr. Banks has seconded the motion. All those in favor, please show by raise of hand. All those opposed, please show by raise of hand. Motion passes. Thank you, Captain. Moving along the agenda to item eight, uh, community and Tampa Police Department matters. We don't have, sorry, Chair. Chair, we don't have anything for you tonight. Moving along to item nine, CRB staff reports and businesses annual report. I know we received the annual report um, and we wanted to discuss as well as this during this meeting if there were any additions. Um, as we know, in order for, uh, for this report to go in front of the city council, we will need to adopt this report and be able to um, all be in favor with what's in the report and, and, and pass it along. So, Captain, do you have any any report for us that relates to this report, or? Well, I'll just give a brief overview real quickly, and then, and then section seven is where you guys add on uh, the statement of the board. This is <coughs> going over the 2023 report, and again, Captain Kevin Scumis of Special Standards Bureau, just as you already have and, and, and went over. So section one just kind of gives a brief overview of the ordinance and the background of the CRB. I know this discussion with the ordinance was earlier, but it's listed on here as well as 18-8. Uh, uh, sec section two is matters considered. Uh, that During that uh, last year, the board reviewed nine cases and in that uh, breakdown of each violation of what was sustained and not sustained. Uh, it also includes overview of the people who addressed the board. Um, section three is the uh, statistics and summaries of complaints. As you know, we have to supply a report every month, and this just breaks it down of how many come in from the telephone or the city intranet, which is a city website where you can complain anything from on the police department to the sanitation or the water department and whatnot. Uh, section four is just the findings and conclusions in reference to the uh, nine closed internal affairs investigation. Second five is any recommendations the board had, has, has made uh, specifically to the, the mayor or the chief of police. 
Uh, section six is the uh, refers to the city council uh, involvement um, in the locations where the the board meetings were held outside of the city council chambers. And then the lastly, which up to you, is the statement of the board. So as you can provide, if you adopt the report, uh, you can provide any optional statements at your discretion. Thank you, Captain. At this time, any board members, do you guys have any comments, recommendations, statements that you would like to discuss? Dr. Collins? Before um, I kind of discuss them, do you want us to submit our written comments to you or just inquire uh, with some of the sections? Uh, Kamaria pettis from the legal department. Are you in, um, Dr. Collins, are you talking specifically about section number seven or mm. the entire document? The entire document. Well, if we could just have that discussion here today at the meeting, that would be great. And then we can notate whatever recommended changes or any input at this meeting. Okay. I just had a couple of questions. And commend you uh, and the staff on doing the report. On the first page under section one, it talked, uh, there was a section on uh, our environment with the hiring of the officers. It, there's nothing wrong with it, it's fine. But I read it a couple of times, and if I'm the only one read it wrong like this, if any other board members didn't, it's fine. But if we could take that perspective, officers on the last, next to the last, well, three sentences up in the second paragraph, it says, that regarding hiring criteria and participate in interviews with prospective officers, it just seems to me when we were talking about hiring criteria, even though it says and, I was just wondering if we could put the prospective officers in front of the hiring criteria so that it will be known that we're talking about uh, with the officers. In other words, we are going over to the interviews uh, we're also looking at prospective hires and just move that up. It, it may not be an issue. It may be okay, but I, I first when I first read it, I go, well, who are we hiring? This is on page two. one now. Section, oh, okay, I'm sorry. It's probably it's section two. one. Section one. Yes, section one. Eighth line down on the second paragraph. Okay, yeah, second paragraph. Yeah, and and if it's. If it's fine like that, but if you come one, two, three, four, five sentences up where it says regarding hiring criteria to participate in the interviews with prospective officers, it just, if we could have said the CRB made recommendations regarding prospective officers hiring criteria and participate in the interviews. Mm -hmm. and I mean, if we, if we find with it at the end, it's okay. It's just that what are we doing when we do that? And that's all I was asking. Yeah. Just a question. Ms. Guy. Uh, Carolyn, we don't really have anything to do with hiring criteria. So the way it's written, I believe it's the way what we do. It says makes recommendations regarding hiring criteria and participation in interviews. If you wanted to switch around, I'm just, I'm not clear. Well, I thought earlier on we did make recommendations. We are not making them now because they are there when we were doing the questions and making sure that the kind of questions they was doing and what they were looking at. So I was looking at that as part of the criteria, but that was at the beginning. And I was kind of there when they said, okay, you want to change these things around. But if we want to leave it out and just let, leave the hiring at the end, that's fine. I just, I saw it that way. And I think that when you're looking at the annual report, we're trying to tell people exactly what we've been doing. And we were doing that only at the beginning. Not that we were saying you have to live here in this area, you have to be this many officers. We weren't that detailed in the criteria, but we were, we were involved. But we can leave it as it is. I just wanted to ask that question. So just to summarize then, and Mr. Tan, you have another comment or uh, just to this? just uh, on that uh, section on interviewing prospective officers, it would be good that uh, if you have a sentence right after that, that the CRB members participated in X number of such interviews. So that you can be, kind of reflect the scope. Yeah, even something like that mm -hmm. would kind of be more definitive. Of what was done during the year. 
and there's probably uh, many dozens of officers, yeah. of prospective officers were interviewed by CRB members. And it's not listed in that other category of things that we did as well, so that would be good. Even that would just take it out because it doesn't look like we're doing uh, much, and that's why I was kind of suggesting it. So we're saying that we're going to change the wording to state that the CRB made recommendation regarding the hiring cr criteria, and we're going to include the amount of times that CRB members participated in the interview panels. Um, that's, that's what I'm hearing. He's saying and the number of times. Not the number no. of times. The, no, the, the number of prospective police officers who were interviewed by CRB members. If I may, um, Kamaria pettis from the legal department, and speaking with um, the captain, section one, mirrors code section 18-8 of the, of the code. That's just giving a general overview of what this board is and what your responsibilities are. If the board would like to include in section seven um, the number of um, uh, hiring or me uh, meetings or the number of interview panels the board participated, that could be included, that, that's an appropriate section information to put in section seven, and that will be on page nine. So if that's the pleasure of the board, um, I can ask Captain Schoolmeasters to determine how many um, interview panels this board participated in as a whole, and that could be included in there. Is that the desire of the board? And if we could, good. that if that we can make that as a motion, to add, that's the first thing that will be included in section seven. Okay, awesome. right, and, and it's not the number of interview panels. It's, it's the a, number of prospective officers who were interviewed. Because that will that's far the exceed mm -hmm. the number of panels. Yeah, you're right. Is that the desire of the board? If we could just have a motion for that, motion? Mr. Could you state it again, I would move that uh, in section seven, we have a, a comment from the uh, that uh, CRB members participated in the interview of X number of prospective police officers. I second it. Dur during the course of the year. Lincoln, can you add uh, reservists as well? Because that's what we interview. We uh, interview not only uh, police officers, but reservists as well. So mm. if you're gonna talk about how much we're doing, you might want to add them in as well. So would it would a would a perspective would a reservist be included? I didn't have any reservists. I didn't have any reservists. I had tons of reservists, yeah. Really? Yeah, I've done like six or seven of these panels. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of reservists. Yeah. You're gonna break it down. Okay. Um Captain Schoolmeasters will break down the category to include the reservists and the individuals uh, who would like to be police officers. Okay. And so then, there was a motion, I believe, Mr. Yeah, Chair? Yes, so okay. we have a motion on the floor um, made by Mr. Tamayo that in, under Section 7, we are going to incorporate um, CRB participations in how many prospective officers and reserve officers the CRB were, was able to provide input and be part of the interview panel. Um, that was second by Dr. By Ms. Guy? By Ms. Guy? And second by. Right, so Mr. Tamayo made the motion, Dr. Collins second the motion. All those in favor? <laughs> please raise your show by sh raise of hand. Any opposes? Please show by raise of hand. Motion passes. Okay, so then I'll go back because that clearly kind of shows the involvement of CRB. But if we go back and look at that same sentence, if that sentence is taken strictly from um, uh, 18, uh, 18, 8, straight from the ordinance, if we could use the sentence that's listed uh, and replace that first sentence on the CRB make recommendation regarding hiring criteria and participating in interviews with the prospective office, just that sentence, if we can take the sentence directly from this, and I think on the first page, and number two under A B under G. I don't know how we went from A, B, C, and then it jumped to G, and G1 and two. But under two, it says participation in the hiring process to make recommendations to the mayor and the chief of police regarding hiring criteria and to participate in the interviewing panel for the prospective officers. 
and just make it simpler and it'll show that it's going to the man, the chief of police, and the high. Because it, you are right with my question that I asked if we put prospective officers right in the front. They didn't. And so if we just put number two in there just like it is, if since that's what section one is doing is making reference to the ordinance, that would be good. And just make it identical. And you already almost have it that way. Again, if you could just have it as a motion. Yes, make a motion. I make a motion that the sentence making reference to in the second paragraph on section one, uh, five sentences up, the sentence make recommendation that we just replace that with number two under G in 18.8. We have a motion on the floor uh, by Dr. Collins to replace the sentence stated under section one, the CRB makes recommendations regarding hiring criteria and participates in interviews with prospective officers by, to be replaced with, um, to make recommendations of the mayor and chief of police regarding hiring criteria and to participate in the interview panel for prospective officers. And this is found in our um, code of ordinance item number two under G. Do we have a second? I'll second. Yes. Mr. Um, Dr. Collins made the motion. That was consistent with what she says. Was there a vote on the motion? There wasn't a vote on the motion. Acting chair can make can second. Is there someone else who did second the motion? I'll second. Okay. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll, I'll no second. <laughs> Mr. Cook has second the motion. That's my first second, so I'll take it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All those in favor, please show by raise of hand. Any opposers, please show by raise of hand. Motion passes. Any other comments, Dr. Collins? And on my fourth one, I, you know, I wrote the page number and I didn't write the section, so I think this is under section four. And this is a question. We had decided that if an individual brought a case before us, uh, and uh, it was filed that when that when that gone through the internal investigation and when it was going to be brought back to us that that individual who presented their issue here would be notified I know we've had one way we had to delay it because the person had not been notified so we delayed it a month to me that's showing that we are working well with the community and I was thinking on number four if that particular protocol procedure that we were using could be included in. If not, it's not. I just wanted to ask, because this is something new that we hadn't been doing. Now, anybody don't, some of the new board members may not remember, but if a person came here and they were lodging a complaint or concern and they came for public comments and we told them how to do it and they went and filed a complaint, uh, at the time, we were saying go to District 1, 2, or 3, or if they do it online, by phone, or however. When their, if their complaint was accepted, then it went to Internal Affairs or whatever, and they investigated it. Once that investigation, we asked that, that because they came to us, we asked them to bring the finding back to us so they would notify our chair to select that case, that that case had been completed and they had a finding on it. That happened but the person had not been notified. So we delayed hearing that for 30 days for the next month so that the individual would be notified. And I was just asking, is that something we should put in here? Or as you said, is that something we should put up under section seven? That's the pleasure of the board. If you would like to put it under section seven as a, as a way of processing those types of um, complaints, if that's the board's Desire, you could certainly add that under section yeah. seven. And I don't care where it is. I just don't want the concept of what we started to be changed mm -hmm. because we've said to the community and people who've come here that we would make sure that they are notified. And it looked like it should have been under section four. Uh, it wasn't there, and that's why I wanted to just ask. And I will go ahead and say this, that, and we also said we would do a running list 
So if that person was coming back to us, and I don't know where that running list is. Ms. Guy? Oh, I think there's someone, but I mean, these sections are based on the ordinance. Correct. correct, correct. So anything that we add that's not part of the ordinance goes in section seven, which is not That is problem, correct, right? that is okay. correct. Okay. okay, thank you. So that could mean, that could be something that we could conceivably put in section seven? Yeah. That's what we're right. going to do. Okay, okay. Can we have it in the form of a motion? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, everything has to be approved by as a board, as a whole, by the board. Okay. Yes. Well, I'm going to make a motion that in seven we also add uh, the protocol that we have established with the community that come in to us to file a complaint, and if that complaint is processed at the completion of it then that individual is notified. It will come back to us with 30 day notice to that individual so they would know, so they can be here should they choose to be here for the review. We have a motion on the floor made by Dr. Collins to add in section seven, the protocol that has been established by this board with the community as it relates to coming to the CRBs and um, making a complaint or any form of, of other actions, and we will give them a 30-day notice once that case will be reviewed by the CRB so that they can um, be in attendance if they wish. Does that portray your motion, Dr. Collins? Yes, sir. Do we have a second? Second. We have Mr. March, who has second the motion. All those in favor, please show by raise of hand. Any opposes, please show by raise of hand. Motion carries. Anything else, Dr. Collins? I think these were questions, and I can let these go because what you just said did we recommend to go before the city council? I'm not going to do that. Now. I need to make a center. Oh, this was the last question. What meeting did we go to that was out near Tampa Bay Tech High School? Was that in 23 or 22? Near Tampa Tech. Tampa, we Tampa, did some Tampa, meetings Tampa, in Tampa. we did some meetings in 2022 and we did one meeting in 2023 and I believe that's reflected in yeah, had, I think you had, there was a two in 2023 I don't know it was was it May April somewhere in there and I was just trying to figure out when did we go to that was Wellswood that was a 22 Wellswood that was a 22 Okay, I, I don't know why I thought it was 20. That was in the last, that okay. the last okay. annual report. That's good. I just wanted to ask that question because I couldn't remember. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. And the, the last thing I'm going to say to the board, since that was that meeting, we talked about going off-site as the ordinance requested when it was changed. And uh, we were doing very well when we were going off site with TPD. And the attendance was better. And we had talked about it, and it was stated that if that's the way we feel when we submit this annual report, we should put in there to the city council that the attendance and the participants with the community was better when we were going with TPD so that we don't have to have staff and everybody packing everything up and all the video equipment since we are mandated with our ordinance. And my question is, is this now the time uh, that we should put that note in there to <laughs> tell them that we felt that we had better interaction with the community uh, and we would like them to change that back? Mm -hmm. Um, Kamari pettis again from the legal department, that certainly was a, a top a, an item or a topic that this board discussed on uh, numerous occasions. So if that's the desire for this board to ask city council to amend the ordinance to modify your community meetings, you could certainly do that in section seven. Okay. We need to make a motion. So yeah, so we, we will need to make a motion and this will fall under this board making a recommendation right. to city council as it relates to um, how we operate and, and conduct business. So this would be something that, yes, we could incorporate possibly in the, in, the, in the annual report that we have low attendance, 
and that we are making a recommendation to City Council, but we do need to make a recommendation to City Council in a form of an ordinance to so that they can review and, and, and approve. And it's, it should be to City Council and Chief of Police, or what? what no, would be? actually, um, and I apologize if I confused it. What my what my suggestion is is if that is the desire of the board, you can make that recommendation to City Council to modify the ordinance that you're established under to change how your community meetings take place. You could say that this CRB recommends City Council modify the ordinance to allow the community meetings to take place with the Tampa Police Department, the, the community meetings to take place with the Tampa Police Department. Modify in that, in, in that, if that's the desire of the board. Because right now I could tell you what the um, ordinance requires I have it in front of me. It says at least four times per year the CRB meeting shall be held in a community location in each of the four city council single member districts. And the respective council member for said district shall be encouraged to attend the meeting in their district. So you could, we could make a recommendation to modify that language to allow you to have your community meetings along with the Tampa Police Department. And remove the requirement for it to be at a single member um, council district because that's how it's established right now and so if we made that motion we can say that motion that you just said <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, mean, I can repeat it but that's i mean we've been saying it over and over yeah, again sure. and uh and that's where i thought okay this would be time for us and you said put it in the order i mean put it in our end report where we ask them to modify the ordinance mr cook had a question yeah i no go ahead well, I was just going to say, if you make that recommendation, if City Council approves it, we would have to, I would have to come back with an ordinance revision. Okay. Uh, my question is, um, obviously, because I'm new, um, I don't know about that meeting that you guys had. I think it's a great idea to go out in the community. So those meetings were with TPD or they were not with TPD? They not were, the ones so if the you. Past few years. Okay. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So the, just for him to understand the full picture, the, the meetings that we've had the past two years has been this same meeting out in the community. So staff and us will go to a community center, um, the camera crew, they will televise it, and we just had the same discussion. About three years ago, there was another form of meeting with TPD that it was a conjunction meeting. I wasn't privy to that because I wasn't part of the board. But, but what I hear from my fellow board members is that that was more conducive and constructive in terms of communicating with the, or engagement more per se, because in our, in our meetings that we held the past few years on the community, we had a really low turnout as it relates to community participation. And it's a lot of um, legwork as it relates to the city and staff and, and, and us traveling to different destinations as well for, for that. Well, it, okay. it was brought on by the ordinance. The ordinance changed what we were doing. So there was some reason they put it in the ordinance that way. So that might be a good thing for us to find out from city council why that was put in the ordinance that way. It certainly didn't come from us. Right. Because we knew the meetings with the police department were great. I mean, we had great participation and, and we didn't have our actual meetings there but we were, many of us were there for those meetings. So I think the difference was our meetings weren't actually there. We were there. But now, because of the ordinance, it says our meetings need to be in each one of the districts during the year. And there, there was some reason they wanted to do it that way. I, and I may be speaking out of school, but I don't think it was from us. <laughs> no. And if and this is what we were doing. Right. We actually went, we put the TPD put the flyers out. Uh, they were in the community. We attended. It kept staff from having to all load up and carry everything and go and set up. And when we've done that, the attendance have been dismal at best. But we had great attendance. The community came out. And most of the board members also tried to go. And if, But I think what happened, in all fairness, I'm not too sure if when ordinances were made and changed by the city council, if they knew what we were doing because we had already did the surveys. And then they put in, they wanted us to do a survey. And our survey was far greater than 
one they had seen. So we were doing things, but unfortunately, they didn't really know what we were doing. They weren't coming to this meeting, and unfortunately, they were encouraged in their ordinance for them to attend the meetings when they were held at in their district, and sometimes they didn't attend either. Only one, only one attended. Yeah. Ms. So Hi. it just seems to me that it's an excessive amount of work for staff to have to go out in the community and have a handful well, of people there. Most of the people were us and staff. And the other part of that is we are we are going out to the police department meetings in the in the districts. We, I mean, I know I've been there. I know some of us have. We attend those meetings because we want to be there. Uh -huh. uh, so I'm not sure if if maybe you know there, and I'm not sure what the process would be, but. To, to go to the city council and say, you know, this this was put in the ordinance. You know, maybe we ask them you know, for their input as to why it was put in there the way it was. I have an idea, but I don't know. I wasn't in those meetings. So, you know, maybe that's the process we need to use. But if we put it in the report right now, it's, it's identified that we see it as an issue. Mm -hmm. And we've been talking about it for <coughs> some time, ever since they put it in there. And so the recommendation to us was, well, put it in, you know, your report. And so I'm going to make a motion that what you said, <laughs> to, I'm going to make a motion that we put that in our, in our section, in section seven, and that it be worded so it's appropriate where we're simply asking the city council to consider modifying the ordinance and letting us go with TPD where we have a much larger crowd, the police are there, the board is there. I know it's a crazy motion, but I'm not saying the motion. I'm saying the motion. Doing that. Hmm? Are we already doing that? No, we're going with them, but we also going out to these centers where they have to take everything and nobody's showing up. What we're trying to do is not go out to the centers and just go with TPD. For, for, the, for the CRB meetings like this, right. not yeah. go out to the centers. Right. But we're already going to the community. Exactly, yes. right. But I don't know if they are aware of it. But I would so, also, sorry. Go ahead. I, I see the flyer and the meetings that we've attended and whatnot, I, I, I want to make sure that at these meetings that we're doing conjunction with the TPD, that there is some form of program around CRB or us involved in the program per se than just, we have a CRB, if you're in the room, stand up. And you know, I, I want there to be some type of more than just a recognition, but more part of the program per se, whether it's we, we have time to, to talk about what we do and and, and highlight cert, like the annual report, uh, because just showing up and saying we're going to the community and, and see a flyer and, and we're not even listed on the flyer, I don't think is conducive to community involvement partnership. So. And, and I don't disagree with you. That's why I said I would rather we develop this because the attendance was better than when Correct. we were going out by Correct. ourselves. And we could work collaboratively with TPD. If they don't want to do it, then, you know, unfortunately, staff will keep having to go out there. I, I do believe that part of the reason was that we are not really part of the police department. We needed that separation, and that's why we don't do a program with them. But we do come to the meetings. We met at a meeting, mm -hmm. and we talked to the people in the, in the audience about what CRB does. But there needed to be some separation. I believe that's why we wouldn't be on the flyer. There need, we are not part of the police department. And, we, I, and I truly believe that we need to be separated because that's what, how we were designed. So met, being part of those meetings, we can go to them. But I agree with not taking the meetings out to the districts because it does cause a lot of work for everybody. Uh -huh. Not for us, but no. everybody who puts on the meetings. So if I hear if I hear you correctly, um, um, board member guy, your your recommendation, if um, Dr. Collins is inclined to accept your amendment, is that you recommend city council remove the requirement to conduct citizen review board meetings in the community at the single member district uh, council members uh, district. Correct. That's you're asking just to remove that requirement from the ordinance. Correct. You could still have meetings as you do here but that you remove the requirement to have your community-wide meetings is if Dr. Collins is inclined oh, to accept that amendment. Okay. 
because what you're saying is staff will not have to carry all that out. Yeah. And, and that's what I'm more concerned. I can go, it doesn't bother me. Yeah. But I think it's ridiculous to have everybody out there. But what also is being said is that part of the ordinance is not going to be a requirement for us to be involved in the community meetings, more so if there's an invitation, we see a flyer, we go, we attend, we show up. I just want to make sure it's captured in the ordinance that we are going to participate out in the community and if we partner with TPD is, is a conjunction partnership. Even though we're not part of TPD, as Ms. Guy was saying, we are a partner within the community and I want to make sure that that's illustrated and, and, and communicated to the community, like the presence of, of our relationship. And I never did think of that. I'm sorry because when I went, all the CRB people introduced themselves. We said what we do and how we were interacting in the community. So we were included. And then they would ask about CRB and they would ask about uh, TPD. And it was a collaborative effort and it was very more wholesome. And that's what involved. I would like to see. And that's what we did when I went. So. Okay, I, I would move that uh, we add the following sentence. Uh, CRB recommends that the City Council remove its requirement referring to holding CRB meetings in each of the four City Council single member districts, comma, and it further recommends City Council modify its ordinance to include, to include CRB participation in community meetings with the Tampa Police Department. Not, not just showing up, but part, participation with. So if I may, Mr. Chair, I mean, Mr. Mr. Chair, there, there is already a motion on the floor from Dr. Collins. I accept that. You accept his mm -hmm. amendment? Okay. There is a motion on the floor, and if you can please um, chime in when, when I'm misspeaking, made by Mr. Tamayo, that we are recommending for the requirement that states that at least four times per year the CRB meeting shall be held in a community location in each of the four city council single member districts and the respective council member for said district shall be encouraged to attend the meetings in their district to remove that and include or modify the ordinance to say that the CRB will participate in Tampa police community meetings with the CRB being part of the meetings. Right, participating Part in the meetings. Participating in the meetings. Yes. So if you could, if I could just get clarity, what do you mean by, um, Mr. Tamayo, what do you mean by participate? Because if it's, if you're saying that you want to, um, if TPD has a community event and that the CRB is there to answer any questions or talk about a topic, um, that right. means that you're participating as a board and that would require, that is triggering sunshine requirements so what do you mean by participate that there be some uh there be some uh, segment part of the agenda of tpd's meeting with with the community to have a the, the okay. crb corner ask ask the crb uh mm -hmm. to, with, meet with, and greet. With, right meet and greet it, it, it doesn't have to be a formal part of the agenda but uh to so that the community knows that a CRB member or two is there to answer any questions that the community might have. And are you saying that would violate Florida Sunshine? <laughs> right, because you'll you're there you're because we've done it before, that's why I'm asking. So, so how did we do it in the past? I'm sorry, I could I couldn't understand what you just I'm said. I'm just saying we did do it in the past. Multiple ones were there at the meeting. It wasn't our meeting, it was, it was TPD's meeting. Okay. But they didn't just let us sit there. They actually, we had an opportunity when the officers got up and introduced themselves, we were, got up and introduced ourselves and indicated and told them that, you know, we would CRB and they can come to the meetings, da 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 Okay, and so then just- some questions may have been asked. Okay. And it was more than one of us there. Okay. okay. Mr. Cook, you had a question, sir? Uh, yeah, this has been a question that I've asked uh, since the first time I've come here, is that um, I attend a lot of, um, not only neighborhood events, but city events as well, and that's where we met. Um, uh, the, one of the better ways for us to identify ourselves is to have something as simple as a name badge that would allow the, the public to know who we are and that we can be approached. So I don't know if this is the, the place to say it or not, but this what we're talking about and identifying ourselves, and even having a corner, which I think is a fantastic idea, having a name tag, each of us have one, when we're out in the public, 
now you actually identify yourself as someone that can be approached. Mm -hmm. and so it's just simple. Look, I, I don't, I don't know. The name tag is what twenty bucks, something like that. Well, we used out. to have a flyer. They took our pictures to make the flyer. We never saw a flyer, so maybe that you know, just having the flyer with our pictures on it. We did have those originally. I think before yeah. your time, but uh, you know, but I think it's a, a good idea for us to have some way to be identified. Um, but back to what you said about sunshine. If we introduce ourselves and somebody asks us a question, we can't discuss that question. So it, that it, it does become a problem if we're identifying that we have a corner. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't really be talking to each other about what somebody says to us because they may come here and we have to vote on something. So, you know, it's it, it, the casual way we've done it has worked. Um, I, you know, I think they identify us when we're there. They introduce us. Um, I've, I've never really had a problem, and I talk to people in the audience all the time. Again, that's how we met. You know, so it, it, it's a good, I mean, it's a really good thing for us to be at those TPD meetings, but it's a bad thing to have to take this meeting outside this room and have everybody have to you know, make sure I'm talking into the mic. <laughs> You have your motion. Yep, we had the motion, and was that motion second? He, he, he didn't. No, I second that motion. I'm, I'm withdrawing my motion. You're amending the motion. I, you you want withdrew me your amend it or withdraw? It doesn't really matter as long as we get it passed. <laughs> You're withdrawing your motion. I withdraw my motion, and what he read is the motion, and I'm seconding okay. Lincoln's uh, motion. All those in favor, please show by raise of hand. I just need a clarification of sure. exactly what is the motion. Mr. Martin. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Sure. Okay. The motion is to remove, and again, Mr. Tamayo, please chime sure. in. Uh, would, would, you, would you mind saying it so it can be sure. your words? CRB recommends that City Council remove its requirement referring to holding CRB meetings in each of the four City Council single member districts, comma, and it recommends City Council further modify its ordinance to include CRB participation in meetings with the Tampa Police, in, in community meetings with the Tampa Police Department. And Dr. Collins has seconded the motion. I, I guess I have some unworthiness. Um, it seems like we could still have the meetings in the four areas um, of the community while at the same time we could also informally participate with the Tampa Police Department when they have their outreach program. And I'm trying to figure out why would we not want to go out of those four areas if it's for lack of attendance that we have to do more to give people proper notification that there's going to be a CRB meeting there. But it sounds like if the TPD, I'm sorry, if we were involved with the TPD, that would somehow trigger or could trigger a formal meeting. So just to clarify, if I may, um, uh, Board Member March, so I organized the all of the community, the four community meetings that were held in 2022 and 2023. I had to coordinate that with each of the single member districts, the uh, council member districts. So the council member would recommend a location for the meeting. I coordinated with that location for this board to have the meeting there along with our um, CCTV personnel and with the clerk for those meetings to take place. I created the public notice of hearing for that for that meeting because it's a regular meeting and that's the duty of your, your attorney to um, create the public notice. So that information, that uh, public notice was broadcasted to the public just as every meeting is broadcasted to the public and members, the public members of the board had that um, notice for the public meeting along with the council member districts when it was held in the community. What the board has found and what they're <coughs> discussing is that even despite the council members being aware of it, broadcasting that the meeting was held in their district, there was a small turnout from the public at those community meetings. And they're asking that the, the motion that's pending is that um, because of the small turnout, despite the council members being involved in organizing or assist, me working with the 
city council members to have a specific location for the community member for the community uh, meetings that there was a small turnout so it wasn't as it was originally thought it would be for the community turnout that's what the board is discussing and that's why the motion is there okay understandable so but it sounds like like for example here right now the community turnout is low so it sounds like for the sake of convenience let's keep have it here as opposed to going to the community will be more work for everybody to basically be there with the same results with the low community turnout and did and I, I get that part correct that's not what i that's not no, no, no. No. okay no but you that's what I, the, I'll the, go that's what it say. sounds like to me look at you're just about right the turnout here is low we've had it where the turnout here was so great when an issue come up until we was here at 11 o'clock and we didn't have a meeting. We just listed public comments. So it goes kind of both ways. It depends on what's happening with the time. But the whole focus behind this is the interaction with the community is what we're looking for. And if we can't get them to sit here, some of them are watching it on TV and they'll call us and say, oh, that was a good discussion. We like what you did. But they also are able to watch them out in the community but all that that we do to go out there, and even the councilmen didn't come in their district. So if it's a matter of being in their district, we can simply ask TPD when they're doing their scheduling, where they kind of look at areas, which they are anyway, and make sure that we're in one of the councilmen's area, and we notify them. But the whole focus of us going out there is to interact with the community, mm -hmm. to let them know we exist, and TPD, and they will see that we're working together for the betterment and the safety and that and it, it's not happening when we go out there it's not happening when we go here but we're doing what the ordinance say we're supposed to do until something happened and then we're flooded and i, I can tell you that uh, we all told our communities that we were out there in what in a lot of different things next door facebook we put it all on there and people still didn't come and that was in all the districts that we, we went to. I mean, it, it, and we, you know, TPD has low turnout sometimes too, but we we would not have anybody in the audience. I mean, it was nobody. So it was it, it was a lot lot to bring it out there. And I get where you're coming from. That going to the communities is a good thing. That's certainly why it was put in the ordinance. But it has turned out to be didn't seem to be to matter that we were out there. And we all, and, and Ms. Collins, I know you you did a lot of things with the churches in the areas and, you know, so it, it wasn't for lack of trying, that's for sure. Yeah, I think that the main objective of us going to the community is that community engagement piece, that when we are out there, the community is engaging with us. And in the meetings that we had at the four sites both years, we had this type of meeting, this type of setting. We came, we conducted our business. Whoever came to speak and during public comment came, spoke, and with the same token, they left. So there wasn't that real community engagement piece that we were able to connect and talk and sh exchange ideas and, and thoughts and, and feelings and whatnot. It was more so conduct business as usual as we are doing here and keep it moving. Just different form of location, venue. Um, and again, it's city staff time, the parks or the community certain sense of time they had to change and be flexible with our timing. Um, so that, that's what brought us to this discussion. And I know last year during the same time, we said, well, let's try one more year and let's see if it changes because it was like fresh out of COVID that we said, well, maybe COVID is the factor, but we came into this year, year same two same after same. COVID and, and still was the same outcome. Um, so that's, that's any further discussion before we move forward with the votes? One question. As it relates to the, the, the motion that is on the floor, how does that impact the requirement for the sunshine and the necessity for them to provide uh, the broadcasting even with us co-locating and co-participating with the police department? Would that change or would that be different? It's not a, it's, it is not a, uh, it's not a CRB meeting. It's a meeting being held by the Tampa Police Department okay. with this community, and they're and they're just asking for our, our participation in it, our our attendance. Attendance or, is. I, yes. 
Okay. Attendance is what, what he's, is what, how he's describing the participation. And it's not a CRB meeting where it has to be publicly right. noticed. Okay. But again, attendance, I want to make sure that we are part of it because I've been in meetings in attendance and it's like, I'm there, but I'm not part of the meeting or type of announcement. Yeah, and, and the participation can simply be uh, the officers uh, there simply introducing Correct. us to the, to, the, to the community. Correct. <clears throat> yeah. Informational only. No voting, Correct. no exactly. quorums, cannot, media, it, it, none of that you, stuff. Yeah. Just are, informational only. We are not conducting business. CRB business Correct. at that meeting. It is a TPD meeting with the community. Okay. That's we, why it specifically says TPD community meetings. Yeah. But participation is a problem in my mind. To say well, that's, yeah. We're, we're, we're participating in a TPD meeting, but it's not our meeting. Yeah, it's not it's our not meeting. Our okay. meeting. Right. And as we all know, we, we are, you know, we, we are board members. We do know the sunshine laws and we do know our, you know, what comes with that. So we just need to keep in mind that if something does come up of, of, of any type of, you know, red flags, we have to walk away or, or just say we can't discuss. And so. <coughs> Moving with the vote. Call for the question. All those in favor, please show by raise of hand. Any opposers, please show by raise of hand. Motion passes. Anything else on the annual report? So we will have the revisions made to the annual report, and then at next board meeting, um, we will adopt them and approve them so that we can get them in front of city, city council. council. Yes, correct. All right. <clears throat> Moving along on the agenda, item 10, items to be continued. Independent legal advisor. So um, these two items that are on the items that are to continue, they'll just remain on the agenda until we can address those, um, um, depending on the legislation that happens as we previous, the motion that was previously made. So the motion that was previously made was made by myself right. and I, I, I've read the new or the final bill and I, I do interpret it um, where the bill does not allow for oversight of any type of form or providing investigations for any type of cases, which we do not do none of the above. Um, I am okay with moving forward with the motion in terms of continuing to do business as usual um, and and start with doing the, the interviews for the independent council next month and um, just continue as business as usual since nothing will change for us. Again, after reading word by word the, um, the, the, the house bill um, the interpretation is that we will not change the way we conduct business because we do not provide oversight, we do not investigate, um, we continue to operate in our same code of ordinance in which we have been operating in since in inception. So, if we're going to do the, what, what, uh, did I miss last month, I'm sorry. So last month, um, I had made the motion that we were going to table off the interviews of the independent legal advisor. So we were, we're gonna bring the candidates today to interview them. Um, and I had made the motion to table that since we did not really know where this whole house bill um, issue was going, um, and we did not have the full, full final word by word on it either. So now that it's um, fully amended, fully uh, out there, we, we've, I've been able to do more research on it. Um, I, and I feel you know confident that I understand what the words are saying that we, we are not going to change the way we operate and conduct business. Uh, so that's why we decided to table that and then out of that discussion we decided to table off any further items that was under items to be continued because we did not know the status of it and where was that going to go. And we had hoped that by today um, the bill would have been signed by the governor and we would have known where we, we stood. Ms. Guy? As a recovering lobbyist, I will explain this as you did. Somebody will interpret this bill, and they won't necessarily interpret it like you do, 
And whoever interprets it for the legal decision, that's the interpretation that will, will be. We can all read these bills. Trust me, I've been there. I thought, ooh, I knew what this meant. And it got interpreted a different way. So I would just caution you to wait until the bill is signed or not signed and goes into law anyway, whichever happens. And at that point in time, we will get the interpretation from the powers that be. They will interpret what this law means, and then we will have to deal with whatever the interpretation is. I'm just telling you what I know. I mean, that's how it works. It's, it's not black and white, trust me. And the other thing, if I might say, I'm concerned about the uh, legal advisor because I just wanted to ask the question, did we uh, disband the concept of going with a uh, uh, putting the jobs back out there again and advertising. So I it, saw what was in the yeah, minutes. It was shared with us that that posting had not happened and did not take place um, since we last met the month before and requested for it to be open. Um, so that did not happen. So is so that something that we can't do now that while we wait? If, if I were to do a motion, my motion would include to continue doing business as usual, to advertise the independent counsel attorney posting um, up to a period of 10, 15 days. So that way when we come back on April 23rd, we can have all the applications and we can have everybody that we decide to move forward with the same process that we had talked about two months ago um, using that, that process in terms of identifying and selecting our independent counsel. You mean a, a, a review of the of the applicants? Yes. Not, not an actual not interview. The app, not the applicants here, but the Correct. review of the applicants. Correct. Correct. Because we would have put them back out there to advertise Correct. again. Question. Would you think that the uncertainty that lingers over us as relates to the bill would uh, dampen the enthusiasm of, of highly qualified attorneys to want to be involved at this point, as opposed to waiting until the dust settles and perhaps a better candidate would be interested in being considered for this? That's a good point. I, I can tell you we only have five candidates that had applied, none of which were from Hillsborough County area per se. Mostly were all out of out of state. Um, out of city. Out of city. Um, so definitely, you know, there's a lot up in the air. I just think that we should just continue operating and conducting business as usual per our ordinance um, and, and tackle whatever comes our way down the road um, as they arise. Someone's putting a motion. So I'll make a motion this to. You cannot. This is, uh, you cannot I cannot because I'm. You cannot make a motion. You, you, you actually are presiding. I don't know what we should do. And you're talking about everything? The survey? The yeah. I mean, I would like for the community survey to be done. It was my point last time. Like, even though. If let's say this bill does pass, it's like why can't the TPD, knowing that there's funding already out there, do a survey to take a pulse of the community and, and really, you know, that's something that can be done, whether House bill passes or not. If we're gonna continue. So the funding is there already. Well we don't want to lose that. So. A question, Chair. Is there some harm that will be done if we don't wait another month? Is there, is there some harm that will be done? Because to the Reverend's point, you know, maybe we will get some more people that are interested, but maybe not. If I, I think we're on the, on the issue of the survey now. Oh, okay. Oh, is it, I mean, again, is there any harm that's going to be done if it's wait, if we wait one more month for all, but both of these? Is there harm? Why don't we, or why don't we consider, because I hear what you're saying, but uh, Dr. Banks made good sense there. We, we want a quality person, and that's why we want to re-advertise. Because right. the we individuals can, that we have are not even local, which was the local mm -hmm. people saying, you need your own attorney. So if that be the case, why don't we indicate that these two be continued items 
both of them will be activated next month and we'll pursue it if we don't have any more information from uh, the, the survey or even from the... Uh, I just know we, we've talked about this item continuously month after month and it's been delayed after mm -hmm. delayed after delayed and I think we owe it to the community that we, we, we want to make sure that we are the same token or are abiding by what is our deliverables and our expectations as it relates to our ordinance and as it relates to everything that we have in front of us. Um, if by any means we, we open and we continue as business as usual, we will advertise and we propose to open that posting now, see what comes in for next month, if next month we need to readjust because we're not pleased with our resumes or we haven't gotten any type of other resumes, then we can at that time adjust and say, hey, let's try it again and, and open the, the pool or window a little bit further if need be. Um, if not, we can decide which candidates we would like to bring in for, for an interview. But I just, again, would like to see some momentum coming out of this and not let um, you know media and what other um, instincts portray how we're going how we're conducting business I, I would love to make that motion but my reservation is twofold what dr. Banks said and the fact that we can't get staff to indicate to us you know they can't give opinion and so that's and, and if I wouldn't want to say do it now but I would like to say that we would say at the April meeting we're going to take this off of the continued items Maybe by then. Well, I'm not sure by then. We'll Look at. No, I'm sure it'll be here. Look at. It'll be I mean, done. I can't guarantee it. But <laughs> that the interpretations like that. will be, be in. Yeah, like that. yeah. Because I think a lot of people are waiting to see. We don't even know if the governor wants to. Mm -hmm. And he has to what? July first. Well, he has to veto it. If, yeah. it, if he doesn't sign. But if he doesn't it, sign it, that's law. veto. It. Well, <laughs> if, we can be he, waiting here until July. Unless he just let it go into. Yeah, that's why he can't let it go in. Yeah. So we don't know what he's going to do, and that's why staff can't advise us. And uh, I would say that rather than taking the action today, that we indicate that, that next month, if the bill has not been signed and we're still where we are, then we move forward. Because I, I still want us to put the advertisement out there again. We got somebody from Pasco, Coral Gables, Sarasota, Clearwater, and Indian River. Nobody from Hillsborough County. Mr. Cook, you had a comment? That's a, that's a quick comment. I mean, if, if, if the board itself is um, floating out there, and we're not sure about what's going to happen in the state government, does that affect the enthusiasm of others who are, uh, are looking at us to um, participate in anything? Because if, if we're unsure, then how would anybody else want to, mm -hmm. to do things with us? Right? So I, what I'm saying is that maybe we should wait. And I, but I like what you're saying, but as, a, as I'm hearing the comments, I'm thinking to myself, maybe we should wait to know what we are and what we're doing, and then go forward from there. Now, does it hurt if we wait a month or two? I, I don't think that's gonna make a difference in what we're doing. But I just feel that if we're, if we're not sure about who we are or what we're gonna do, it's gonna affect how others view us. So the enthusiasm may not be there that we need to, that we're going to need. Understood. Okay. I understood. And, and I do want, if we are still in the same boat where we are currently right now, I would like to see a report from city attorney staff of, as to what they interpret this bill would have an effect on CRB so that we can then know where we stand and where our city um, attorney staff also also stand. Um, I'd like to make a quick comment, just a quick one. I'm not an attorney. I'm just a regular guy out here. So when, when you guys are telling me that the bills get interpreted like that, man, that shed a lot, a huge light on what's going on here. Because I, I listened to um, Shaw, Mr. Shaw, and I'm, I'm all excited here. I'm saying we're going to continue on. And then as we're all talking and the attorneys are talking and even the, the former lobbyists, we're still unsure of what's happening. So, I mean, how can we continue on as, as, as a strong board when our foundation is shaky like this? That's all I'm saying. So I feel, my opinion is we should wait until we find out what's going on and then go from there. Because I like what Mr. Shaw has, has says. Um, you know, I'm gonna talk to him when we're done. But it doesn't mean that we're 
it's written in stone because everybody interprets these things and we all know what the lawyers are, right? So they, uh, no, nothing negative, nothing negative. I'm just saying lawyers interpret things. That's what they do. I mean, that, that's what it's always been. So why are we now saying that we're definitely going to be here when, no, we, we don't know yet. That's all I'm saying, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Guy? Uh, I just want to make this clear. I don't think for a moment that Attorney Shaw is wrong. I'm just saying it could be interpreted other ways. The things he pointed out to us, it was excellent. I mean, it, 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 drew, it put the light on things we need to be looking at. But there, are, there is an interpretation out there that may or may not match his. So I think that's why we need to be careful. Absolutely, your presentation was, mm -hmm. you know, was helpful to us for, not, for many reasons. I think he wants to talk. Your public comment portion has been closed already. I understand that, but Ms. he can approach the podium the board decides if that's something that we... Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't either. Is that I'd like to hear what he has to say. Mr. Shelton? Just trying to turn down. I'll move board to member, extend guys, uh, public comment. Mr. Tamayo, there's a motion on the floor from Mr. Tamayo um, to reopen public comment so that Mr. Shaw can address the board. Proper. And there's a second by Dr. <coughs> Collins. All those in favor, please show by raise of hand. All those opposed, please show by raise of hand. Motion passes. Mr. Shaw, very quick. Just the uh, board member Guy is correct that somebody will interpret the statute. The ultimate interpreter is the Florida Supreme Court. It's gonna be a long time before it gets to them. The immediate interpreter for this board would be your legal advisor, and I think you wanna select the legal advisor who's going to give you advice as to what HB 601 means and doesn't mean. I think there's gonna be CRBs in Florida who, who, who interpret this as, well, this has been fun. I guess we have to wrap things up right now, and, and that will likely comport with the wishes of the administrations in those municipalities. But I think there will be other CRBs that are interpreting this, this bill the way that I'm interpreting it, and, uh, and which one this CRB is gonna be is gonna have a lot to do with the interpretation that's given to you. So yes, there will be an interpretation from on high, but the interpretation that you'll get will be the one that will come from the legal advisor that you select, and so if my, you know, my, Two cents as a member of the public is that it's probably best if you proceed with the process of selecting your legal advisor. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Um, Why doesn't he apply? I was thinking the same thing. Why the heck doesn't he apply for that position? Because it doesn't make any money. <laughs> <laughs> Carrying on with the items of the agenda, announcements, and new business. Again, I can't make a motion, unfortunately, but I do want to see city um, staff report to us their interpretation of the bill at our next meeting. Um, if anyone would like to make a motion as it relates to that, if not, hopefully we can see you next month. You know, if I can. I, I don't particularly want to make a motion, but here's what I would like to see. I'd like someone between city staff, uh, mayor, police chief, because it's, I mean, we're looking at legal and I'm looking at how was the ordinance formed. It was formed by the city council. And we don't know who might be influencing them understanding of what's being said. But I, that's why I said next month we take it off the agenda and we move forward. But we are giving time for someone to come back and give us some definitive information next month. And I, and I feel very strongly about that after Dr. Banks, because if we put it out there now and people think it's a waste of time, then we're not going to have anything but the same vibe that we have now. So I would suggest that we as a board, we pulled that off the pending items next month and take action on it. Thank you, Dr. Collins. Any other formal announcements uh, before we adjourn from any of the board members? Hearing none, seeing none, meeting adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>